I hope you're all doing well today. This time we are going to be talking about Warsong, also known as Langracer, on the Sega Genesis. At first glance, the story of Warsong isn't really all that amazing. It's your typical thing where a prince is part of a kingdom that gets invaded by the big bad guys who happen to be agents of chaos or influenced by the entity known as chaos. His kingdom gets overrun, father killed or, or whatever, and he then has to rally a bunch of his supporters in order to push chaos out of his kingdom and then eventually go and defeat the agents of Chaos. Along the way, he meets a whole bunch of people who are going to help him. Some of them are soldiers that were in his father's army or the kingdom's army. Others are just random people that he kind of comes across. And each of them can recruit other soldiers to fight for them that kind of act as cannon fodder. I'll get into that more when we talk about the gameplay. But yeah, this this story at first and through most of the game was pretty basic. It wasn't anything that I was blown away by until you get to the very end. So you get to the very end, you end up fighting chaos, basically, or the embodiment of chaos. When you defeat it, it kind of chides you and, and says you didn't actually do what was right because these two entities, law, uh, law and order, sorry, these two entities, chaos and order, have to be in balance. And you can't have one without the other. Otherwise, things kind of, you know, go crazy. And the... You know, your main character kind of reflects on that, and you're left wondering, did you actually do what was right or what was wrong? It That last moment was what kind of saved an otherwise, you know, overly frustrating game for me. Because I was really goddamn frustrated with this game as I just kept playing it. Let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay, and I'll try to explain just some of the really annoying parts of this game that I, I did not like very much. So this is a tactical RPG that is kind of like a cross between Fire Emblem and Advance Wars. I know that's a weird combination to think of, but that's sort of how the game plays out. You have your general units, which are the characters that you meet along the way, and then they can recruit a bunch of smaller units to go along with you. Every unit has 10 hit points, and there's kind of a weapons triangle that is around the units in some ways, but not really. And then there's also the terrain, which plays a well, sometimes plays a much bigger role in the fighting than than it really should, and at least, I don't know, it's weird. It's very, very weird. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about it, because I, yeah, th this was one of the most annoying parts of the game. So when you first start, it really feels like you're playing Advance Wars in some ways, except for you can't conquer cities or bases, you can't recruit new units while you're fighting, so that part kind of feels a little bit like Fire Emblem. If one of your generals dies, it takes out all of the units that that general has recruited. This works both ways, with your units and with the enemy. So there's a lot of incentive to eliminate the enemy generals as quickly as possible, because it wipes out all the cannon fodder. The caveat to that is you gain experience from killing the cannon fodder. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird like that. So when your cannon fodder kills off the other team's cannon fodder, your general gets the experience for it, and vice versa. So, yeah, there, there's all of that stuff that goes into it. At times, that 
that cannon fodder, which comes in the form of like archers, cavalry, spearmen, guardsmen, or like some aqua units as well, that stuff that stuff occasionally feels like you wasted your money on it, but at times it's super important. And it goes to some of the randomness in this game. I had originally thought when I was playing this, after the first few missions, that there was a kind of basic triangle going on here. Like, archers beat cavalry, cavalry beats spearmen, spearmen beats archers. The problem with that is, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes, archers don't beat the cavalry as much as you want, because the terrain plays into effect, or comes into effect. And it can drastically change the way the fighting goes, and it's very inconsistent. So if you are fighting, if you're fighting on just open plains, then your archers will beat your ca- will beat cavalry. If you're fighting with your archers on mountains, it kind of works that way. If you're fighting in forest with both units in forest, it sort of works, but not really. And then. So I kind of had that down to where I thought those were good matchups. Then the levels came into play. So if you were fighting, as, even after the promotions with this, because I'll get into that in a second, if you were fighting as a level 1 and you went up against a level 3, sometimes there would be a huge advantage for the level 3. Other times there wouldn't be. If you were at the same level, sometimes that would be different as well. That's the big word in describing the combat in this, is sometimes this works, and sometimes it doesn't. Because it really feels just totally random. So to to get to promotions, uh, like in Fire Emblem, once your character reaches level 10, it can be promoted to a new class. The difference here is this happens automatically in Warsong, and you've got kind of a a class tree that you can go through. So if you wanted to do, if you wanted to have like all knights, you could do that in some cases, but it allows like some replayability, so you can sort of change the direction of your characters as this goes. That is kind of cool and interesting. I like that. I just, yeah, it, it's, it got really frustrating while I was playing this because, yeah, I, I could not figure out how the combat works. So to go back to that, and I know I'm kind of all over the place, your generals can completely ignore the the unit triangle at times. There's, it's, God, this is annoying. But at times your unit, at times your generals will do incredibly well against anything that comes near near them. Other times, whenever the game feels like putting its thumb on the scale, it doesn't work out that way, and your general is in just like constant danger the entire time. So it just it's very frustrating to kind of figure out what the best matchups are because at times. It, well, it changes from like mission to mission, and it can change from engagement to engagement. So there are a few times when you run into monsters in this, and those guardsmen that basically were fighting with like toothpick, were fighting with like toothpicks and spitwads, they're sudden, suddenly incredibly powerful, and they can easily defeat a lot of the the units that are coming at them. Then you'll have a unit with a higher level, but it's a spearman, and it's fighting against the enemy. But the enemy's a water monster, and it's attacking your unit that's on land. And it'll do really well against the spearman, but then it will attack the guardsman, and it won't do as well. So it felt like there were multiple overlapping triangles in this, and it just got super frustrating to kind of navigate this whole thing. Anyway, I've gone on for way too long here. 
I didn't like the combat to say to say the least. Um, the mission goals at times can be incredibly confusing. It's really awful. Like when the first mission in the game, you're told you need to escape the castle, but they don't tell you where you need to go. So you try to, so you kind of fumble around for the first few turns, and not even that. Like your first few attempts at beating this level before you kind of luck into where you're supposed to go. It it just stuff like that in War Song is just incredibly frustrating. I I know that there was a remake of this game, and I'm assuming they added in a tutorial mode because that's what I was really desperate for while I was playing this. It's yeah, I like the whole idea of it. It's got a lot of fun stuff in its gameplay, but overall, it's just really frustrating. For a game released in 1991, I think War Song looks pretty good. The sprites aren't as detailed as something that you would see on like the the Super Nintendo or even the the Turbo Graphics 16, which this game was released on. But I think they get the job done. They look good enough just from like an overall overall on the uh, tactical screen. They look pretty good. But those same sprites are used on the battle screen, and that doesn't quite feel as good to me. I kind of wish that they had been able to do something a little bit different, but yeah, whatever. The generals all look fairly good, even if the sprites don't always reflect what the uh, the actual units look like. So, like, Mina has pink hair, but her av- like her sprite on the battle screen and the combat screen has blue. So they kind of reused those, which feels a little weird to me, but that's the way they wanted to do it, then okay. I don't know. Like, they're... There's just some weirdness to the game that I don't necessarily like as much. Uh, the fact that there are no cutscenes in this are, is kind of kind of crappy, actually. Uh, they use the same style where they'll just sort of cut to text, and you'll have to listen to a little bit of the story as that plays out. But I feel like this would have been better if there had been like those comic book cutscenes from Fantasy Star 4, or something close to that, or if the sprites had been more detailed, that would have been better. But we just don't get that in this game. I think the terrain looks pretty good. You can tell what everything is. The Seeing the grid is uh, a little strange at times, but it kind of makes sense with this, and... You know, it does sort of feel a little bit more like you're playing Advance Wars or something like that. But yeah, I think overall the the character portraits look really good. I like those. But yeah, it, I think that they could have probably done a little bit better. Even though the game does look good, it doesn't look good enough to really you know change my opinion of everything else especially given how much I dislike the gameplay. So overall, I like the way the game looks. Um, I like some parts of the gameplay, just not all of it. I like the whole idea of having a tactical game like this that kind of feels a little bit like a a role-playing version of Advance Wars. It's pretty fun like that. The story is... The story was okay and then took a really nice turn at the end, so I enjoyed that. Um, But overall, the combat system in this and just trying to wrap my head around everything that this game was constantly changing, that, that was not something I enjoyed at all. Like, there were a lot of problems with that. Uh, Yeah, I, I could not figure out for the life of me what this game expected me to do in certain instances it feels like terrain matters a lot more than some of than uh than like unit type until the game decides that it doesn't and i didn't like how vague they were about certain uh certain mission goals 
that felt really annoying. Some of them were very clear. Others, it was kind of like, well, I'm not really sure what I need to do. And you just sort of have to guess on where you're supposed to go. That was really annoying. So, d did I like this game overall? I think it's okay. I, I think it is, it's a flawed game. It's extremely frustrating at times. But I, I think it's still pretty good. Uh, not really anything that I would write home about. It's not, it's not bad enough for me to get upset with. And it's not good enough for me to forget a lot of the flaws in the game. So, yeah, there, there's some things in it that I really enjoyed. But overall, just the confusion with, with the combat system, that was something that I just couldn't get past. I'm assuming that the it's either a remake or a remaster that's on the Switch of the first two uh, Langresser games. Those are probably better and those would most likely be a better option than going back and playing this one, unless you just want to be annoyed. Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and let me know if you played this game back in the day, because I would really love to hear some people's uh, opinions on that, just how the game played back in, in 91 or whenever you actually played it back in the 90s, or if you revisited in the 2000s, or, or any other time. That's going to wrap things up. Uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.